We're looking at the vision in Zechariah, Zechariah, and we're looking at chapter 4 today, verses 8 through 10. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. So this is part of the challenge that God faces. He, he wants to move his people forward, but they're, like we said, they're kind of off in la-la land. <laughs> He, he respects our liberty. He gives us freedom. He doesn't take it away. And he wants to move us forward without taking away our freedom, but without forcing us or imposing us. Sometimes we get a little push, but he keeps our freedom. And so uh, we are all twisted up, kind of like the roots to this crazy tree. We're all twisted up when we try to go our own way. But if we will watch for the Lord's leading, we'll find a straight path. The people are having some trouble finding this. God is working through his leaders. So when the temple is finished, God's work will become evident. He says, well, when it's done, I'll, you'll know that I did it. And that kind of seems kind of weird to us, you know, like, what use is that? Like, when we know it after the fact, what use is that? So what's the meaning of all this? Why, why go this way? So listen, all this is a pointer to faith. That's what it is. It's a pointer to faith. We, we kind of want this easy thing. Well, God, show us what happens before it happens, and then we'll all have faith. But no, God says, look, when it's all done, you'll know I did it. But along the way, it's the journey that counts. This is all a pointer to faith. He wants us to be in the journey, be in the process of believing, following. Sure, in the end, we'll see the finished product. That's fine. He's going to give us that. But along the way, what, what will we, how will we grow with just with that finished product? We grow by moving along step by step, by taking the step. Hey, when the Red Sea, Moses, God part of the Red Sea, and Moses said, go forward, Somebody, there was somebody up there in the front of the line, right? There was somebody who put his foot down. The water splashed away and they went forward. Somebody had to take a step. God always wanting you and I to take a step, take a step forward. And that's how we grow. I mean, we either grow or we don't grow. And if we don't grow, yeah, we've sort of missed the whole business. Are we interested in growing? Or are we just kind of interested in, in sitting placidly in the chair with our hands folded and riding on the bus and kind of waiting for it to get to its destination while we haven't done anything, we haven't pedaled, we haven't pushed, we just we just kind of snoozed out on the ride. And God says, no, it's better for you to grow. So this part about the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel, uh, there's actually some un not certainty about what the meaning of that is. Boy, what's in the translation there fits pretty well, but that's not the question. The question is, what is the actual meaning there? So whether it means that or not, here's what I know and here's what you know. The earlier part of our vision we're looking at today says this is about restoring the temple. This is about God restoring things. And so we know that's what it's about. So we can lean on that. We know that whatever this, uh, when we finesse this and figure it out to the perfection, we know it's going to come up in support of that idea because that's right there contextually right there in the text. So we, we're going to just kind of stand on that. That's something that's clear. Verse 9, I'm going to stand on where it's clear when I come to a spot that's that I don't have clarity on. I suggest you consider the same approach as you study the Word. So God is on His throne. He's working out His purpose. He's doing it without overrunning anybody's free will. He keeps the dignity of man that He gave us. And He's kind of putting us on the spot. Uh, he could jump out in front. His angels could jump out in front and do everything for us. But what would, how would we grow from that? It's live. It's, it's, there's no rewind button. We're in this thing. We're in, uh, on the way. And so what we want to do is, again, to be alert, find out what God wants to do, and do it. And in Zechariah's day, the people were kind of getting stuck. They were getting stalled and stuck. And often today, we're kind of stalled and stuck. The Lord loves us, and He's on our side. He's put us front and center. He could be front and center, but but seems strange to us. But He puts us in the front and center. He's doing the great conflict between good and evil. And He's putting us up there to show the universe what happens when you draw close to God. So he's calling on you and I today to draw close to him and he'll do mighty things. Mm -hmm.